today you join me on my first day of my second leg of uh, my coastal bike ride tour around Britain and this is a Solway Fir uh, and I don't know if you caught my last video I went from Blackpool to Gretna Green and I stopped at somewhere called Bowness on Solway which is the other side of this water over there in England and I was looking uh, across uh, here which is Scotland I've got to touch the Solway I'll touch the Solway there you go woo it's quite warm man. So I picked up this second leg at Gretna and I'll be heading west along the minor peninsulas of Dumfries all the way to the hammerhead shaped bit of coastline called the Rins of Galloway. Then it should be a straightforward scoot up the coast to air. Right, so my first stop, my first proper stop anyway, is uh, here. This is Kiavalok, I think that's how you say it, Kiavalok Castle. Um, and it's just south of Dumfries. And it's a rare example in Britain of a fully moated, uh, triangular shaped castle. And it's just absolutely wonderful. One of the great things about this castle is it was besieged by Edward, uh, King Edward of England, Edward Longshanks, as he was famously known, the guy who battled uh, William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. Um, anyway, it was besieged by him and his forces uh, in the year 1300 because the, the Lord of the Manor who resided here at the time was uh, sympathetic to the pro-Scottish, the Robert the Bruce uh, side of that campaign. So it was besieged and he took it over as well. So. Nice one. <laughs> so day one, I did manage to power my way to Dumfries and beyond. Uh, by the evening time, however, I'd run out of places to camp officially and so I had to improvise around the village of Corkerbush, uh, choosing a little woodland behind this church where I could set up my tent for the night. Right, so I'm in another castle now. This is Car Sleuth Castle, um, and it's just a few miles south of Newton Stewart. Um, this is day two of my trip, by the way, now. Um, as you can see, it's raining. Um, I've not filmed anything at all today because it's just been completely boring. It's all been uh, farms and fields and cows, um, and I've hardly seen <laughs> the sea at all. So as you can see, it's started raining. Uh, the weather's been all right. Um, so far my trip except I've just been going into this massive headwind the entire way so I'm absolutely knackered it's only three o'clock in the afternoon on my second day and I'm exhausted I think I might have pushed myself too far to do the distance anyway it's just started raining just to add to the fun anyway the reason I've stopped here apart from to rest and get a cup of tea is <laughs> to look at this finally after after almost 24 hours of not seeing or just getting glimpses of, of the sea there is in all its glory so Carsleuth Castle is more of a manor house than a castle really and there are many tiny castles along this bit of coastline this one does have a cafe though so it's a nice welcome break from the wind so after a miserable slog on the bike through gales and torrential rain I made it to Wigtown and took a look at the Martyrs Monument it was here in 1685 that two local women were tied to stakes in the marshes and drowned in the incoming tide for daring to turn their back on Episcopalianism and practice a growing Presbyterian form of Christianity instead. The older lady, Margaret McLachlan, was tied out a little deeper so that the younger woman, Margaret Wilson, could watch her die first. Another great result for the church there. And by the way, I managed to get a solid roof over my head that second night away from the wind and the rain by sleeping in this common room of this campsite just south of Wigtown. Town. 
After a wet and windy second day, day three started out with a quick visit to the tip of the large triangular shaped wedge of land at a place called the Isle of Whithorn. Here there's an ancient chapel in dedication to a hermit called St Ninian and another glimpse of actual coastline. It's also here where they filmed the 1973 film The Wicker Man. Okay guys, so it's the end of my second full day of cycling, uh, my third night ahead of me and I've finally reached it, I managed to get here, it's getting dark, uh, but this is the Mall of Galloway, this is Scotland's southernmost point, just down there, um, and we're really high up above the sea at the moment, um, and this is the lighthouse, the Mall Lighthouse, um, and it's beautiful. Um, that was built by Robert Stevenson, the grandfather of Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote Treasure Island. <laughs> I just read that on an information board, so that was quite interesting. Here I am, in the middle of nowhere, really, because there's no campsites nearby. The nearest one's miles away, probably about 10 miles away. Um, so I'm a bit in the middle of nowhere. I'm thinking I'm gonna find somewhere around here to wild camp, put my tent up. Um, possibly around the lighthouse, somewhere like that. You can't see it from here, but the entire, I think it's called the Loose Bay. I've done all that today from just south of Wigtown, where I started this morning, all the way, I don't know how many miles, 70 or 80 miles or something like that. I'm absolutely exhausted. My legs are killing me. Uh, so hopefully tomorrow the wind will just let up and it'll be all downhill. It won't be downhill, but it'll be all all right. It'll be a good day. Right, so good morning everyone. I did manage to find somewhere up here to pitch my tent, um, right below the lighthouse. And there it is in the corner. That's my tent and all my messy setup. Um, right in the corner of the wall, so I was protected from the wind all night. Um, so yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, what else? Look at this view. <laughs> Sunrise on the Mull of Galloway. Beautiful. Um, it's about six o'clock in the morning now, by the way. Um, the moon's out. That's up there, the moon. And of course the lighthouse uh, has been flashing all night. It does flash every now and again. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, it flashes on demand apparently. So uh, yeah, um, it's just been, it's been a great place to wild camp up here actually. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to today. Right, so just in case you wanted to know uh, kind of the route I'm taking, um, I've left the Mull of Galloway now and I'm heading back on myself. I came down this road yesterday uh, into a killer headwind as well. Um, it literally has taken me about 20 minutes this morning without that headwind to do what took about two and a half hours last night. Um, so <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, so I'm heading back on myself. This is a beautiful beach this, uh, I think it's called uh, Tirali. Um, and I'm going, I'm saying goodbye to the bay here. I'm going over to the west coast uh, to Port Patrick, which is the the biggest town or village on the west coast of um, the Rins of Galloway. And then I'm following that round to Stranra. That's the, the plan today. And because there's quite a distance between Stranra and Air, and I'm hoping to go home tomorrow, I'm going to see uh, this afternoon how far I can get beyond Stranra. Uh, really. Um, knock off some of those miles but anyway today it's a, it's a beautiful morning might enjoy the beach for a bit it's 
So I made it to Port Patrick and it's absolutely beautiful. The sun's come out, it's nice and warm. It feels like August at last. Um, and it's just everything I actually ever wanted from this bike ride. Seagulls, the smell of salty sea air, fishing boats, a beautiful bay and some sunshine over the sea. Um, that's just all I ever wanted from this coastal bike ride and I just feel like, you know what, I feel like all that hell I've been through the past couple of days has been worth it uh, just for this <laughs> um, and I've just had a nice uh, vegan meal as well in a cafe beautiful <laughs> so Port Patrick is actually one of the only settlements on this uh, western side of uh, the Rins of Galloway um, and it's the largest one um, and it, this harbour used to be where you could get a ferry uh, across to Ireland in the Isle of Man um, it was quite a busy uh, ferry port back in the day of course it's still a fishing village um, and it's built its history like a lot of coastal towns uh, off fishing um, now today is a bit of a well it's just a nice place to come if you're a tourist um, but yeah definitely worth the trip if you ever some reason in this neck of the woods <laughs> you might as well come here <laughs> right so it's about two o'clock in the afternoon um i just left port patrick I'm on my way to Stranra and I've come across a bit of trouble. Um, I just met a couple of guys on the road, a couple of old fellas with touring bikes like mine. Um, and we had a nice chat. How are you doing? Oh, that's a nice bike, that type of thing. And he said, where are you going to? And I said, air. Yeah, um, hopefully tomorrow I'll get there. Um, and he said, oh, which way are you going? And I said, well, I was just going to follow the coast. And they both immediately said, no, 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 don't go up the coastal road, the A77. It's a nightmare. It's a death trap. Uh, it's a ferry road, cars drive, nose to tail, um, it's a dangerous road, don't do it, you'll die, basically. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, oh, alright, okay, is there an alternative? And he said, yeah, you go inland, um, you go up into the hills, and you'll get to Girvan that way, uh, via a place called Bar Mill. Um, so, that's Kaibosh, my little coastal route. Because I want to stick next to the coast but if the road is going to kill me and it is uphill most of that road as well so it's not like I'm going to have a fun time doing it anyway so but these two fellas all right they might be a bit over cautious but one of them said um, he's been driving the A77 for 30 40 years he's never seen a cyclist on it um, and that sounds like a bit of a challenge to me but so I'm inclined to take their word for it which means when I get to Stranra I've got to make a decision do I do the stupid thing and get on the A77 just for the sake of following the coast um, and have a nightmare going uphill for whatever, 25, 30 miles, whatever it is, um, with cars up my ass, potentially risking my life. <laughs> I think I've just put myself off. Um, or do I go inland and add an extra 10 or 15 miles to what I've already got to do? Um, not only that, but I've got to go into the hills. It's much higher than the coast. Um, Alright, so here we are in the beautiful Stranra. Um, it's actually nice to see in the sun. I remember the only other time I've been here was when I was a teenager with the family and I just remember, I don't remember anything about it except it was just bouncing it down with the rain. So it's, it's nice to see it in the sunshine and see what a beautiful bay this is. I was looking at the A77 um, and some people have cycled up it. It's, you know, it's not impossible, uh, but it is a highly dangerous road. Um, but with me having the backpacks, having the, the bags on my bike, I'm not just some guy on a bike doing a commute. Um, so if, for whatever reason I run out of puff and I've got to stop and push pushing uphill on that road it's a very narrow uh, a road I've decided I'm gonna get the train but I'm not gonna get a train to Girvan I'm gonna go halfway I'm gonna go Bar Hill on the train 
and it's, it cuts out about, I don't know, 10 miles, 15 miles or something like that. Um, I'm not best pleased about it, it's a difficult decision. I'm really gutted uh, that I can't do the A77 up the coast, but you know what? It's only a little bit, it's not that much, it's only a titty little smidge. The entire coast of Britain is thousands and thousands of miles long, so if I'm missing out 20 miles, I'm alright with that, I can live with that, do you know what I mean? And as it turns out, sticking next to the coast of Britain is a problem that repeats itself for all coastal adventurers. Especially around Scotland, where the nearest roads to the coastline are often several miles inland anyway. Right, so I've made it to Girvan now. I'm back on the coast, I'm back on the seaside. Uh, so I've just come down the hill and it was beautiful and it was easy most of the way to Girvan. Um, and then suddenly, out of the blue, <laughs> you can't even see it anymore. Over there is Elsa Crag. Um, and it's fucking visible now. Uh, but just suddenly I was just coming down the hill and it's just like, boom, there it is. And I was just drawn to it like a, a moth to a flame and I feel really bad on the rest of Girvan because I've just I've just ignored it it's all only over there I've just come straight to it to the seafront and I'm like where is it let's have a look now the name Elsa Craig means fairy rock in Gaelic which I think is just lovely um, and it's also sometimes known as uh, Paddy's Milestone because it's the half well it's roughly the halfway point between Belfast and Glasgow and uh, for any Irishman um, traveling uh, to work in Glasgow, usually on the shipyards um, back in the day. Um, that was usually the first bit of land that they saw before they reached uh, the Scottish mainland. So, Elsa Craig is lost in the mist at the moment. Now, of course, Elsa Craig is world famous for being where they make curling stones from. Like the granite from Elsa Craig is where they make curling stones from. Apparently, 70 to 80 percent of the world's curling stones are made from Elsa Craig granite because it's the best. But I think more interesting is that it's um, it's a, a haven now for guillemots and puffins and razorbills and all sorts of these wild birds that are going, uh, well not going extinct but they're very rare now in Britain. Um, it's a haven over there for them um, and it's a site of special scientific interest, the triple SI um, and you have to have special permission to go over there so I like it, I like it's a bit of a protected area. So after a bit of an up and down day and with only a little daylight left, I pushed on as far as I could, hoping to find somewhere suitable to pitch my tent and put it all behind me. Thankfully, I stopped just 10 or so miles south of my final destination, ensuring the last day of my trip would be an easy one. So there you go everybody, that is the end of this leg of the journey, the end of this adventure um, between Gretna Green and Air via the Mull of Galloway um, and it's been a mixed bag to be honest with you, the weather was against me, the, I had torrential rain and gale force winds the first couple of days and then finally yesterday I had some sunshine around Port Patrick and it was nice to spend the night uh, the other night at um, the Mull of Galloway Lighthouse that was brilliant that was beautiful under the stars but you know what it's done and i'm glad i've done it so i'm here this is cullen castle uh, just a few miles south of air uh, and i've had a look around i got in for free but don't worry about that um, it's stretching the definition of a castle i think it's not really a castle it's a it's a manor house it's a, a place for posh people to live um, president eisenhower was a big fan of it apparently it's just a <laughs> It's just a manor house on a cliffside. It's not a castle. Let's be fair. Let's take the signs down. It's not a castle. Anyway, it's beautiful. But I'll tell you what is more beautiful. This. Look at this. A nice, flat, calm Firth of Clyde on a beautiful sunny morning. And over there, you probably can't make it out on the camera, but that is the Isle of Arran uh, peeking out at me there. And that is just a promise of what is to come in the future. Because my next leg 
if I do it will take me from air um, up the coast a little bit and then I'll get the ferries and I'll be exploring the Western Isles of Scotland so from me and my bike which is over there crazy horse um, and the Firth of Clyde and the Isle of Arran thanks so much for watching I hope you made an interesting video um, I'll see you later bye